<laughs> I haven't seen these in a while. When it snowed, we'd go out for snowball fights, dress up days. And Fred Ochoa looks back through 28 years of teaching, the last 21 in Salem. In the quiet of the day, kind of wonder, did I do a good job? He said that answer started to become no more often. You know, as the years go by in these photos and I get to the last part of my career, it was it's more like, how did I ever get through that class? He said classroom disruptions were getting worse. It's an issue we've been covering for months in schools across Oregon. Teachers have sent us pictures of the aftermath. Ochoa said his students were hurting others. This one student was daily, almost by the hour, getting up, bullying kids, disrupting people, putting his hands on kids. Or running away. She would get up, hit other students, throw her chair, head out the door, head out to school, and become what we call a runner. But it wasn't the kids that made him retire early. It was always bad. What got worse is the lack of support. That last year, I was close to a nervous breakdown. The worst thing is caring so deeply about kids and then seeing them in crisis and not being helped. It's a really awful, helpless feeling. Emily Bershay resigned from her teaching job at Portland Public Schools after seven years. I saw students in crisis that we were not meeting their needs. And when their needs weren't met with the resources that we had, they were being violent, they were being defiant, they were running out of classrooms, they were threatening the teachers, throwing scissors. She said the district doesn't have the people, training or resources to offer the mental health supports the kids desperately need. We need more people in the classrooms. We need less people that are walking in and taking data for 20 minutes and then telling the classroom teacher more things that they need to be doing and instead we need behavioral paras, we need mental health professionals. She said the classroom became so unsafe for her and her students, she had to leave. It's really sad and I feel really guilty about leaving my students behind um, and my community behind. Um, I'm at peace with my decision, but I'm still grieving the loss of that profession that I love so much. Numbers we obtained from the Oregon Department of Education show a slight increase in the number of teachers not returning to the classroom compared to five years ago. But the state doesn't keep track of the reasons why those teachers left. KGW sent our own survey to the more than 300 teachers who contacted us after our first classrooms in crisis investigation. The more than 60% who answered said classroom disruptions have caused them to consider quitting, and 17% said they quit because of it. Berche and Ochoa worry others will leave too if districts don't make real changes soon. Smaller class sizes, trained adults in the classroom, a focus on mental health. As a general rule in medicine, what's the point of treating the symptoms and not trying to cure the problem? You know, they make such great points. We've been talking so much about this problem. Now we want to talk about possible solutions. So we gathered teachers, we gathered parents, administrators, and lawmakers all together for a special hour-long conversation, and we focused all on solutions. It was a passionate conversation. It was interesting. It's the first event of its kind. It airs next Wednesday at 7 p.m. It's an hour long. I cannot wait to share some of the solutions that this group came up with. Well, we are looking forward to Absolutely. that. You know, what was really clear from your story is one thing was how much they care about the students, Absolutely. even though they left the profession, how much they cared about the kids. Exactly. It's not the kids. It's not the outburst that made them leave. It's having to not be able to help these kids, not being able to teach and not having the support and resources to help those kids who, who are in crisis. Kristen, thank you, Kristen. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Okay, so if you have a story idea for Kristen to investigate, you can give her a call, 503-226-5041, or you can email callkristen at kgw.com.